top news for today, September 9, 2020. The LTFRB reopens 10 additional jeepney routes in Metro Manila. Interior Secretary Eduardo Año justifies the need to monitor social media to enforce quarantine rules. The Interagency Task Force approves recommendations on the conduct of COVID-19 vaccine clinical trials. And Defense Chief Delfin Lorenzana dares the Makabayan Bloc to file charges against the AFP over red tagging allegations. Good day, I am Ram Dufa. Welcome to PNA Newsroom. Ten more routes reopen today here in Metro Manila as the LTFRB allows more traditional and modern jeepneys back on the road. The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board or LTFRB has been implementing a calibrated and gradual opening of public transportation in Metro Manila and nearby provinces since June. The LTFRB says uh, based on the monitoring and coordination with the local government units, there is a continuous need to open additional routes for traditional POJs to serve passenger demand. Traditional POJs that have valid personal passenger insurance policy could operate without a special permit. POJ operators must download the QR code from the LTFRB website and must be printed on short bond paper and displayed on the front windshield of the vehicle. Tighter screening on the issuance of travel authority will be implemented for returning locally stranded individuals or LSIs. Joint Task Force COVID Shield Commander Lieutenant General Guillermo Eleazar says details such as the name of the LSI, date of travel, details of vehicles to be used in transportation, and other pertinent documents and information are needed before a travel authority is issued. A medical clearance certificate issued by the city or municipal health office is also needed to secure a travel permit. These requirements will then be checked by the police station of the receiving LGU before allowing them to proceed to their destination. This measure came in response to the complaints of some LGUs regarding the uncoordinated re return of some LSIs. The LGUs attributed the surge of COVID-19 cases in some areas due to the influx of its returning residents. Meanwhile, locally stranded individuals or LSIs bound for Western Visayas, Lano do Sur and Indigan City are temporarily suspended. Authorities say a local transmission currently occurs in Lano del Norte due to LSIs and returning overseas Filipinos. Western Visayas and Iligan also noted a surge in the number of cases. Lano del Sur and Iligan City are among the three areas placed by the president under Modified Enhanced Community Quarantine or MECQ. The moratorium is effective for 14 days from September 7 until September 21, 2020. Cebu Governor Gwendolyn Garcia has issued an order halting the extraction and transport of dolomite for Manila-based rehabilitation project. Garcia also ordered the local government of Alcoy, the Philippine National Police and the Armed Forces to assist the provincial government in implementing Executive Order 25 ordering the Philippine Mining Service Corporation and Dolomite Mining Corporation to immediately stop further extraction, processing, sale and transport of dolomite, associated mineral deposits, and other quarry resources. Garcia said there were no public consultations before permits were issued to PSMC for the transport of dolomite rocks from Cebu to Manila. She also notes the extraction was done at an environmentally critical area and a critical slope. Meanwhile, Interior Secretary Eduardo Año allayed fears on the supposed health risks caused by the crushed dolomite. Citing the presentation of Environment Secretary Roy Simatu, Año says the dolomite sand being laid at the Manila Bay is no longer harmful because they are three or four times the size of the sand and cannot be blown by the wind. Año says if the Department of Health could prove the health risk of the dolomite to the health of the people, the government would stop the project. Interior Secretary Eduardo Año defended the move to monitor social media platforms in going after violators of quarantine protocols. Año says social media platforms have been useful in their investigations against community quarantine violations, particularly those reported by concerned citizens through social media. Last week, Joint Task Force COVID Shield Commander 
Lieutenant General Guillermo Eliazar told police commanders to monitor social media for quarantine violations, noting that it is full of videos and pictures of people violating the quarantine protocols. Eliazar, however, says these pieces of information will only serve as the basis for further investigation and that violators will not be arrested. Philippine National Police Chief General Camilo Cascolan says the JTF's plan will not lead to violation of human rights for as long as there is no abuse on the part of law enforcers. Random checkpoints may soon be conducted on EDSA targeting drunk drivers. MMDA General Manager Arturo Jojo Garcia says recent data showed uh, road crashes involved distracted drivers or those driving under the influence of alcohol. Since the start of the new EDSA busway, Garcia said there have been around 100 accidents involving private vehicles and concrete barriers along EDSA. Though no concrete plans yet have been made on the proposed random checkpoints, Garcia says it will mostly likely be done during curfew hours. Those driving under the influence of alcohol will face criminal charges and possible jail time. Navotas, Manila, Taguig and Pasig have bolstered efforts to combat COVID-19. Marita Moahe with more. The local government units in the metro are implementing various measures to contain the spread of COVID-19. In Navotas, the interventions of the national government is said to have efficiently helped the local government to control the local transmission of COVID-19 as it has effectively slowed down the positivity rate in the area. Navotas is keen on imposing granular lockdowns to villages with high risk of COVID-19 while conducting regular monitoring of households during lockdowns. In Manila, all public and private memorial parks, cemeteries, and columbaries in the city of Manila will be temporarily closed from October 31 to November 3, subject to general community quarantine or GC guidelines during the UNDAS period. Only interment and cremation services for non-COVID-19 cases will be allowed, provided that minimum public health standards and social distancing will still be observed. In Taguig, a proactive and aggressive response to the coronavirus disease yielded positive results. According to Mayor Lino Cayetano, Taguig's average number of active cases was 591 while the whole national capital region was 898. In terms of active cases per 100,000 individuals, NCR was at 184 and Taguig is at 60. Case doubling time is 19 days and about 10 days for Metro Manila. Health Secretary Francisco Duque called the city a role model. In Pasig City, the local government has developed its own patient information management system app that could speed up the medical interventions and treatment capacity for COVID-19 patients. Mayor Vico Soto said they are also ramping up their contact tracing so that they will be immediately isolated from communities. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Marita Muahe. Still to come, the Interagency Task Force approves recommendations on the conduct of COVID-19 vaccine clinical trials. The anti red Tape Authority promotes e-signing of official government documents. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. Sa matinding laban natin sa Coronavirus Disease 2019, sugpoin din natin ang pagkalat ng fake news. Huwag magbahagi ng impormasyon na hindi tiyak ang pinagmulan. I-check mabuti ang source ng balita. Kumuha lamang ng impormasyon mula sa mga official channel ng Department of Health. Huwag magpadala sa maling balita. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa. Kaya natin to isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. Alamin kung paano ang tamang pagsusuot ng surgical mask. Una, hawakan ng mask sa strap at siguruhin natatakpan nito ang inyong bibing at ilong. Tandaan, ang may kulay na bahagi ng mask ang dapat nasa labas. Ito lamang ang tamang paraan ng pagsuot nito. Ihulma ang nose piece o maliit na metallic strip ayon sa hugis ng inyong ilong. Iwasan ang paghawak sa inyong ilong at bibig. Kung marumi na ang mask, hubarin nito gamit ang strap at itapon nito sa isang basurahan. Siguruhin ang maayos na paghuhugas ng kamay gamit ang sabon at tubig. 
Ang surgical mask ay dapat gamitin ng mga pasyenteng may sakit sa baga o mga taong mayroong ubo, sipon at lagnat, mga nag-aalaga sa mga may sakit, at mga healthcare at frontline workers. Maaari ring magsuot nito kung kayo ay pupunta sa matataong lugar. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. You're still watching PNA Newsroom. Thank you for joining us. The Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases has approved the recommendations of the conduct of clinical trials on vaccine development. DOS Secretary Fortunato de la Peña says there are two vaccine clinical trials. One is the independent clinical trials by companies and the other is the WHO Solidarity Trial. De la Peña explains that if in case there will be a competition in a trial site, the WHO will be prioritized, but authorities will make sure the companies will not be deprived of trial sites. The trial sites will be conducted at the barangay level and participants should be those who are its real residents. This means transient residents are discouraged unless they can prove they will stay there for another two years for them to be monitored by the health authorities. The government plans to establish a task force on logistics which would focus on bolstering efforts in providing the needs of healthcare professionals amid the COVID-19 pandemic. National Policy Against COVID-19 Chief Implementer and Presidential Peace Advisor Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. says the provision of healthcare necessities will be funded under the Bayanihan to Recover as One Act or Bayanihan II. Under Bayanihan II, Galvez says the government will provide free transportation and accommodation to the healthcare professionals. He says they have discussed with the Office of Civil Defense or OCD the creation of a so-called task group on logistics which will monitor their needs. On the other hand, Galvez says the government continues to put up more isolation facilities and boost the country's testing capacity. Galvez said there are 117 accredited testing laboratories nationwide, which can facilitate around 30 to 31,000 tests per day. The Interagency Task Force announced the adoption of new guidelines for proper clinical assessment that will serve as the basis for quarantine, isolation, testing, discharge, travel, and return to work decisions during the COVID-19 pandemic. The IATF says part of the general principles of the measure is proper clinical assessment anchored on symptoms and exposure. Availability of the test, the best time to use the test, turnaround time of test results, and test capacity and sensitivity are the factors to be considered in determining the right test. Furthermore, IATF members are now allowing the use of the antigen test as a substitute for RT-PCR as a requirement for tourists while traveling. An antigen test detects the presence of viral proteins in a biological sample such as saliva or tissue swabbed from the nasal cavity. However, the IATF said RT-PCR test still remains the gold standard for confirmatory testing. Western Visayas region reports nearly 50% recovery from COVID-19 and residents in Leyte are encouraged to ride bicycles for health. More on these and other news from the provinces from William Theo. Close to 50% of the COVID-19 cases in Western Visayas have already recovered from the disease according to the Department of Health, Western Visayas Center for Health Development. Medical Officer for Dr. Marie Jocelyn Te said the region has 3,034 total recoveries. The region logged 6,153 total cases with 3,029 active ones and three deaths. In Leyte, residents are encouraged to ride bicycles as a hobby to keep them healthy and means of transportation while public transport operations are still limited. Leyte Vice Governor Carlo Loreto said biking is a must try as this not only helps one to become physically fit and healthy but also enhances mental health. He shared that in the past weeks he had been invited by biking enthusiasts to join them in their biking events in Baybay City, Albuera and Burawan towns. He suggested for local government units to allocate a portion of the road as bike lanes. 
In Pampanga, the city government of San Fernando has called for the residents' cooperation in containing COVID-19 by practicing what it called Good Health Care Seeking Behavior, or HSB. Residents are advised to seek early consultation, especially when experiencing fever, cough, cold, and other symptoms of the dreaded disease. San Fernando City offers telemedicine where they can contact cell phone numbers in case they have symptoms. Those who had contacts with a confirmed case must also ask assistance from the city health office or the nearest health center to get the proper advice and treatment. For the PNA Newsroom, I am William Theo. To enhance the integrity and authenticity of electronic transactions and documents issued by the government, the Anti-Red Tape Authority, or ARTA, is pushing the digital signature service of the Department of Information and Communications Technology. ARTA issued a memorandum directing all government agencies to avail and recognize the use of the DICT's Philippine National Public Key Infrastructure, or PNPKI, in signing official documents. It said, the PNPKI can be used by various government agencies, private entities, and the public. The ICT chief, Gregorio Honasen, says the PNPKI and ARTA's effort to promote its use in the government will help ensure reduced contact in several government transactions amid the pandemic. To date, the DICT said at least 97% of the Office of the Solicitor General or OSG workforce has been reported to be using the PNPKI. In our business news, the Philippines is one of the top digital risers worldwide, according to the Digital Riser Report 2020 of the Berlin-based European Center for Digital Competitiveness by ESCP Business School. The Philippines was named as one of the world's top digital risers along with France and Saudi Arabia, which ranked first among G7 countries and G20 nations, respectively. The country landed at the top spot in East Asia and the Pacific region. The report analyzes a country's digital competitiveness during the last three years, indicated by digital ecosystem and mindset. The Philippines also ranked first in mindset dimension and second in ecosystem. The report cited the country's Innovate Startup Act Lighthouse Initiative, which was passed in 2019 to strengthen, promote, and develop an innovative and entrepreneurial ecosystem and culture. It also mentioned the government's regulation on startup visas, prioritizing and expediting applications of prom promising startups and enablers, and integrating entrepreneurship in education's curricula, as well as providing grants and incentives to academic institutions. Up next, Defense Chief Delfin Lorenzana dares the Makabayan bloc to file charges against the AFP over red tagging allegations. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Tandaan ang tamang paraan ng paghuhugas at paglilinis ng kamay upang makaiwas sa iba't ibang karamdaman. Basain ng tubig ang mga kamay at sabunin. Unang sabunin ang mga palad at ang likod ng mga kamay. Kuskusin na maigi ang pagitan ng mga daliri at maging ang mga kuko. Isunod ang pagitan ng mga hinlalaki at kuskusin ng paigot ang mga dulo ng mga daliri sa magkabilang palad. Banlawang mabuti ang mga kamay sa malinis na tubig at patuyuin ang mga kamay gamit ang single-use towel o air dryer. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to! Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at nang himpilang ito. Alamin ang tamang paraan ng pag-ubo upang mapigilan ang paglaganap ng Coronavirus Disease 2019. Ugaliing magdala ng panyo o tissue. Kung uubo o babahing, takpan ang buong ilong at bibig gamit ang panyo o tissue. Kung walang dalang panyo o tissue, maaaring gamitin ang braso na pantakip. Kung nakararamdam na kailangan umubo o bumahing, agad na dumistansya sa mga tao sa paligid. Huwag dumura kung saan-saan, gumamit ng tissue at itapon sa basurahan. Ugaliin ang paghuhugas ng kamay at paggamit ng alcohol o hand sanitizer upang mamatay ang mikrobyo. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at nang himpilang ito.
Defense Chief Delfindo Rezana has dared members of the House Makabayan Bloc to file cases before the court over the red tagging remarks in the social media posts of various military units. Lorenzana made a statement in the House panel deliberations of the agency's budget for 2021. Kabataan Representative Sara Ilago confronted him regarding the alleged state-sponsored disinformation against the Makabayan lawmakers through the armed forces of the Philippines units online posts. Lorenzana defended the Facebook posts, claiming that the AFP only publishes materials that are backed by evidence. He said uh, the social media posts of the AFP are monitored by the Civil Relations Service and the Presidential Communications Operations Office. The Police Regional Office Western Visayas on Tuesday advised all its police units to be consistent in the anti-drug war. The PRO6 reported 981 police operations from January to August this year in Western Visayas. The operations resulted in the arrest of over 1,300 drug personalities and confiscation of over 64 million pesos worth of illegal drugs. PRO6 Chief Brigadier General Rene Pomuspusan made the reminder in line with the pivotal three-point strategy of new PNP Chief General Camilo Cascolan, which includes a COVID-19, anti-illegal drugs, and issues on international security and insurgency. Nagos Occidental Police Provincial Office launched the highest number of anti-illegal drug operations with 436 that resulted in the arrest of 607 drug personalities. The Social Welfare Office of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao has provided a 10 million peso financial aid to Marawi City's Amay Paktak Medical Center. Minister Raisa Hahurie of the Ministry of Social Services and Development and APMC Hospital Chief Dr. Shalimar Rakin signed a memorandum of agreement for the delivery of the medical assistance. This will cover the hospitalization, laboratory tests, and medicine of qualified indigent patients in Lanao del Sur. The financial aid forms part of MSSD's assistance to individuals in crisis situation program under the Emergency Assistance Program Fund. On August 25, the MSSD also provided similar cash assistance to the Cotabato Regional and Medical Center in the city. This week, the MSSD said it will provide similar aid to hospitals covering the 63 barangays in North Cotabato and those in Basilan, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi. In sports, the Commission on Higher Education will lead the way in setting up the return of collegiate sports teams to practice amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Chad Chairman Prospero de Vera said a technical working group will be put up along with the Philippine Sports Commission and the Department of Health to craft the guidelines. The decision followed a meeting with the PSC, Games and Amusements Board, and the Department of Health last week. Chad Chair Prospero de Vera says the guidelines will be first implemented in a smaller group like the University Athletic Association of the Philippines or UAAP, the National Collegiate Athletic Association, and the Cebu Schools Athletic Federation Incorporated. Allowing team practices came amid the ongoing probes on the alleged bubbles put up by the UST men's basketball and the National University's women's volleyball teams. According to De Vera, show cause orders will be sent to UST and NU for them to explain why they should be spared from sanctions. A single parent and her family are selling artworks to help their eldest get a laptop for his online classes. Jaramine Manalang, a solo parent of five, posted sample artworks of her eldest son, Christian Ribay, on Facebook with the hashtag Christian's Art for a Cause. Christian, a grade 11 fine arts student at the University of Perpetual Health Molino campus in Bacoor, Cavite, is raising funds to buy a laptop or tablet for his studies. Jaramin says he accepts jobs to draw a portrait or any work of art. Jaramin worked as a cook for a catering business before losing her job due to the pandemic. She believes there are still kind-hearted people who are willing to help them, most especially his son. For his part, Christian just finished doing a portrait for two friends of his mom and he is just excited as he loves drawing very much. Those who are interested to help them may direct the message Jaramin Manalang or Christian Ribay through Facebook. Here's the latest in our community billboard. 
The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or FIVOX, is conducting an online nationwide simultaneous earthquake drill on Thursday, September 10. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the drill can be viewed online via YouTube and Facebook. Preliminary activities will start at 1 p.m., where participants are encouraged to answer online scenarios where they will try to assess the proper response. The drill will start at 2 p.m. Meanwhile, the next bar examinations for aspiring lawyers will be held in November next year. The Supreme Court says the examination periods and the venues of the next bar examinations will be announced in a separate bar bulletin. Last April, the SC decided to postpone the 2020 bar examinations to next year in view of the increasing number of COVID-19 cases in the Philippines. We take another look at today's biggest stories. The LTFRB reopens 10 additional jeepney routes in Metro Manila. Interior Secretary Eduardo Año justifies the need to monitor social media to enforce quarantine rules. The Interagency Task Force approves recommendations on the conduct of COVID-19 vaccine clinical trials. And Defense Chief Delfin Lorenzana dares the Makabayan bloc to file charges against the AFP over red tagging allegations. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check more news content, check our webpage or head on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags on all our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's the daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. I am Rom Dulfo. Good day and keep safe.